Classic Georgia Tech? I mean, I know engineering is tough. My friends don't engineer right yeah. now. Uh, Virginia Tech, man, he's always... It's rough. He's constantly talking about how hard it is. It's, it's rough. Well, I was taking my classes, but I was doing good. You know, but I just, you know, I got hooked up with the wrong ground. You know? And then, like I said, because everything always came easy, I never really, I never really tried. I just never tried. And even my class now, you know, I'm holding the B average, but, you know, I'm... I'm here. I'm, you know, I'm here talking to you guys. I should be studying. <laughs> hey, you know what I mean? No, I'm joking. <laughs> I ain't gonna blame on y'all. But uh, you know, it, it's just that there's so much around here that you know you can very easily. That's one of the things. My one of the people that helps me here, Dr. Jean Faber. She's a retired school teacher. She's like, man, you're you sound like a Republican because too many black people have a tendency to always. You know, the white man is the white man that. Man, I'm tired of hearing that. You know what I mean? We all know racism there. We all know it's there. That's not, that shouldn't be your excuse. That shouldn't be your cop out. Mm -hmm. You got to rise above and do what's right for you. And then when you hit an obstacle, you, you got to go through it. You go through it. But sometimes you go around it. So, um, you know, it, it, it's, it's sad to see what these schools are doing. But now these schools are starting to realize what they're doing. Lower Marion is being sued right now by the black parents group because of Laura Marion hasn't been teaching their kids. Well, I'm like, you can do that in Bradley, you can do that in Conestoga. I made it through Conestoga. That's crazy because I remember um, someone was telling me uh, that all right, they were they were black and they had went to Laura Marion and I know in Laura Marion she was saying how there's two tracks. There's like a vocational track yep. and there's like a college prep track. Yep. And she was like, they automatically put her, um, her daughter in a vocational yes. track. Yes. And she was wondering like, like why would you just yeah. put them in a vocational track? Well, they dummy them up. You know what I mean? A lot of kids, number one, they don't have the preschool stuff anymore that a lot of other kids have because, you know, the affording of it. Um, so when you look at that, um, it starts, that's why I, what I do, I start with kindergartens. You got to start young. You know, you know, I started with the high schoolers, you know, playing basketball. But then I realized, number one, either I'm going to knock somebody out or, <laughs> or, you know what I mean, or I'm going to be in trouble. You know, both of them are, isn't a good scenario, but... You know, they, once you get to high school, nowadays junior high and some even elementary, your your foundation's already set, so you got to catch them young. Yeah. And and I know going through this district, I never studied. But they were, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I know a lot of a lot of people that you know don't know how they made some quit. Um, I just had an incident now where one of the kids. I do a lot of work in the school districts. Mm -hmm. You know, Radnor and Trippin and Lower Murray, and. Uh, I've done speaking engagements there, so I, I get around, you know, with what I do. But one parent was telling me about their, their daughter, and she happens to go here, right? Came in as a freshman, 3.6 average. Now she's a junior, has a 2.5. She and goes to Cabrini? No, to Conestoga. Oh, high school. okay, okay. Yeah, Conestoga's the high school. And they were like, well, that's okay. There's colleges you can get into. Excuse me? That's not okay. How do you go from 3.6 to 2.5? Where were the red flags up once you got from 3.6 to 3.4, 3.2? You know what I mean? So, but that's what they'll do for us. You know what I mean? They'll sit back here and push us through. You know, oh, 2.5 is fine. No, it's not. You know, get your butt. You should be driving for 4.0. That's where you should be at. And, and so that's one of my fights. You know, I've always fought these people on, on just some of the bull crap they, they put us through, you know. And, and they definitely have different tracks. They always, you know, all this ADD, get the heck out of here. Some of them just need a foot in their butt. You know, <laughs> that's how I look at it. You know, I, I don't believe in all these learning disabilities. Are they there and are they true? Yes. But I think some of it is when you have the home broken up the way it is, you know, mothers by themselves or daddy's not there or whatever it could be. Daddy might be the single parent. Um, kids having more free time, sitting on video games. Boys, you got to put them in sports. you got to have something, you know what I mean? Because boys are going to run and do all kind of crazy crap. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when you start talking about this, and I see more boys being the learning disability, so they come into the school way back here because teachers don't have the uh, knowledge as to, number one, how to teach a black child. There's differences, you know what I mean? Black kids are just different because of how you're raised. It's not that they're different physically. But when you're in an environment where you have um, the freedom to speak a little bit more or differently, it, it makes it a lot harder. But I, I just look at how our, our, our kids are just being lumped into these dummy classes, not challenging them. 
you know, allowing them. Like I had a kid here, she was in Algebra 2, but she found it difficult, so she dropped down to Algebra 1. Well, get a freaking tutor. You know, that's why you come here. Get some help here. But she waited too long. See, we can only do so much. Mm -hmm. You know, we can't go in the house and force them to do it, you know. So. So who do you believe uh, influenced you the most, like, in your life? My mom. No doubt. My mom raised five kids by herself, never asked for a dime from nobody. She uh, ended up working at AT&T, retired from AT&T as a communication craftsman. So she was like probably the most influential out of my life. That woman right there was made to be all. She definitely helped a lot because she tutored me. Um, my brother, my dad, I can go on and on about <laughs> just the different family members, but if I had to put an emphasis, no doubt my mom, no doubt Miss Hall, and on top of all that is God. So, yeah. um, so your, your kids, what, what types of things are they doing? What type of careers are they in? What kids? My son? Yeah. yeah blockhead. Now he has his own business. He has a painting business. And my son's doing pretty good. I'm kind of proud of him. I was a single parent. You know, it was just me and him. And, um, oh, really? You just you was a single parent? Yeah. Uh, it's usually the other way around. Yeah, no, that's what I was talking about <laughs> dads. A lot of people think that women are the single parents. I mean, did I have some girlfriends and all? Yeah, of course. But um, I have one young lady that was there a lot during some of his formidable years. But for the most part, it's always been me and him. And um, he's doing pretty good. He's 31. I got two grandkids back there on that picture. Um, Cache and Trey. They get me up. Uh oh, you messed up the camera. Miss Swartz, get up. Get me. <laughs> These two? Yeah, yeah. little bubble heads. Now, see, if you see that little rock head in there, that's Kevin the third. I was like, dude, it's bad enough with me and you out here. Now you're going to put the third out here? <laughs> Lord, have mercy. he's a piece of work. But Cash Chase, you got, just got tested for being gifted in, in mathematics. Um, so she loves school. She's really into school, and I'm so proud of her. That's good. And Trey, he's, you know, he's a little boy. That's what yeah, I'm saying. That's he's he's running wild, but at the same time, now he's, um, seeing what his sister's doing. So he's taking school on because they were coming here to our tutoring program yeah. and they're taking it on and there's no doubt I'm really talking to them a lot about education. Um, cause like I said, that's, that's the biggest. Yep. So, so I got a, um, a final question for you. Um, nope. So how, how do you feel about teenagers like from my generation um, growing up now freely using the N-word? Hate it. Hate it. I don't want to hear. You, back in the, and this is for talking purposes because I don't like using this word. Back in the day, nigger was a racist term. It definitely evolved out of blatant racism. The KKK, us being killed, hanged, murdered, shot, beat, burned, you name it. So for so many blacks to fight the establishment to get us equality because remember we were not equal back in those days so to that's me so to try to get that equality people die you know people went to jail people went through so much you know you hear about dr king and different people but there's a whole lot more that did it you know what i mean the fought so you have that evolution and then you have my time where it was black power. You know, we got things, but we still didn't have them. We had it on paper. But a lot of blackness was not um, allowed still. You know what I mean? They were still paranoid. You still couldn't, you know, go in the South and do certain things, or even up here in the North. In the North, it was worse. So now, fast forward, the word nigga and nigga, get the heck out of here. It's still a blatant racist term. So when I see young people, first of all, don't use it around me. Young, old, whatever, just don't use it. You know what I mean? I remember one boy, white, white, sorry, white, sorry, Miss Horse, but this white boy at school, <laughs> one of the cheerleaders liked me. And he called her a nigger lover. Wrong move for me. I caught him in, in, in school, pop, dropped him, and I was on top, beating him up. My coach came, grabbed me by my pants. Kevin, don't you know you got a game tomorrow night? You know. Missed the game. No, I actually let me play. Uh. Until we stopped. So he was on, you know, he had the dark glasses the next day. But I tried to break his freaking neck. Um, so even now today, to me, it's a shown, it's showing a lack of respect for your, your ancestors, for people that died for you to have the privileges. Young people today 
and that was one of the things I talked about in black history, you don't have a clue, not you, but as a whole, as to where you came from. Because if you knew where you came from, well, you wouldn't use that word. And, and, and that's why I don't like some of the rap, because the rap uses that term too much, calling our, our, our queens and our princesses, you know, the, the B word, you know, bitches and hoes. Come on. You know what I mean? That's just blatant disrespect. Because, typical example, your mom. Would you like somebody calling your mom a B word? No, what would you do? bro. You, no. you, you follow what I'm saying? <laughs> so why use it on someone else? That's someone's daughter. That's someone's mother. You know what I mean? It's called respect for yourself. And when you have respect for yourself, you won't use that word. You know what I mean? That, that N word is just, it's used so frequently that it's almost devaluing and, and taken away from what our history is. Our history was built on blood from that word. And now to use it so freely, it just makes me sick to my stomach. And I tell these little young whippersnappers, you know, you know, get, get, get away from me with it. You know what I mean? Well, oh, Mr. Kevin, you know what I mean? Well, then don't say it. You know, learn your history. Have some pride in yourself. Exactly. You know, and that's what it's about. You know, that, that, that. And then, you know, nothing against you guys. But white boy, oh, man, come on, brother. Wait, hold up, boy. You ain't mom. No, I mean, let me rephrase that because we all brothers. But, yeah. yeah, he got some more. But, you know, I... We're all brothers, but you don't know me like that to come up here and try to act black to me. You know what I mean? You don't know me like that. I, I, I don't feel that. You know what I mean? Now, are we cool? Can we do Yeah, we can do all that. But let's keep it real. You know what I mean? Because a lot of times I'll find that different nationalities and races will try to come at me with the blackness versus coming at me as a man. See, I'm a man first. I just happen to be a different color. You know what I mean? So you don't have to put on airs. You don't have to come at me to let me know that you have black friends. You know what I mean? That I don't feel that. You know what I mean? And, and that comes from, once again, just being um, a proud black man. Always have been, always will be. And I get myself in a lot of trouble when I go into meetings because, you know, half of them are white. Why? Because it's in this neighborhood. So when I come in there, I'm not trying to, like I said, come and leave who I am behind to impress you. When we started this, one of the biggest things that came up is like, and I was talking to this lady about this one over in Holland Avenue, this building. And I told her, when we first started this, we were more getting no money. And everybody was like, well, yeah, I can't understand this. This is a great project. I see it. Hey, it's a black neighborhood. They don't care about us. And one of my mentors, John Fuchs, he was one of them. If you want to ask me, that's, I need to put him down. But John Fuchs was a good mentor. Because he came when it was time to get this building done. But when I told him that, he was all, oh, Kevin, you can't be serious. And everybody didn't believe it. But the reality of it was, it's a black neighborhood. They didn't care. So, um, you know, they might mess with you, but they want you bad. So when, they, um, when I told them that, they got on the phone and, you know, we had more money coming in. But that's just the history. So, like I said, when, when I see young people disrespecting their race, in order to do whatever it is they want to do, it's, it's just sad. It saddens me because there's just too much history. That's one thing I try to teach these kids here about your history. You know, there's just too much history to let it go by, even in here. A lot of people don't understand about the history of why these black neighborhoods are here. Well, it's to cater to the rich white people. You know, somebody got to clean them houses. They weren't doing it. You know, and, 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 you know, this whole country, I mean, see, we go further with history and how this whole country made their money on the backs of minorities. And now we can't get nothing. Can't even get a pot to piss in. That's why they're so disrespectful to President Obama. He's the first president where they just blatantly disrespect him. And it's like, okay, and then dingbats from the um, Tea Party. That's another form of KKK. Blatant, redneck, racist behind people sitting behind this Tea Party emblem to provoke a lot of hysteria, a lot of hatred, a lot of violence. You know, like the one woman was on TV. She just happened to have her placard and dude, a freaking man beating up a woman. See, that's another thing. You want to go somewhere, man putting a hand on a woman. Why? Walk away, you're a man. A woman's never stronger than you. You know what I mean? Are there some women that'll knock you out? Oh, yeah. 
You know, something you gotta be careful of. But why, why put your hatred? But that, that's once again rap. See, rap, rap shows a lot of that. But see, you know what's funny is that a lot of media will bring up the whole rap thing. Well, guess what? Rock and roll ain't no better. You, you follow what I'm saying? There's some stuff that goes on with rock, and then that satanic message they got on there. You know what I mean? It's just like that's another thing that can take you in another direction. See, these are directions that we're not made to go in. You know what I mean? You can either go in this path or that path. You know, like it says in the Bible, there's a narrow path. A lot of, a lot of them are called to this path, but not too many can go off this path because it's not easy. It's easier to do the nonsense. It's easier to do the easy way out. It's easier to go down, you know, to, um, what's your old dining hall called? Jasmine's. Yeah, going down to Jasmine, eating up all that junk. Eating them chitterlings. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm, you don't eat them, man. I'm having somebody come up to me. I always tell this story. This white dude came up to me. I was joking at work. Man, they be eating them chitterlings. Oh, Kevin, I just wanted to let you know that they're actually called chitlins. Really? Thank you for letting me know. <laughs> Definitely, I'm a <I'm> brother. <laughs> I, know, I know what a chitling is. I'm just messing with you, but you said he answering, so. That's funny. Anyway. I think that's all we have for you today. Yeah. Sure. I think we're well over an hour, too. Yeah, I think you are too. Yeah. Whoa! My kids are getting ready to come here. We definitely went over and over now. Oh, yeah, we yeah, are. Yeah, they'll be here at 5 o'clock. 